one of my takeaways early in the book, you outline the journey you and your family have been on over the last couple of years, your decision to leave the Southern Baptist Convention, the the craziness of the Trump years, the sexual abuse scandals and cover-ups, all. I mean, it's just the opening of the book. I felt like you've been through a lot. But my takeaway was this book felt like the journey of somebody who had always recognized evangelicalism's challenges and problems. But it feels like you shifted from recognizing those things as bugs, not features, to the realization that maybe they're features and they're not bugs. Yeah. Is that a fair assessment of where you are with your view of evangelicalism? N- no, not quite. I okay. mean, and, and here's, this is here's, why I wanted to ask it because I yeah. really want to know what you're thinking about. Yeah, here, here's here's why I say not quite because there are there are people who would say, well, that's all that evangelical Christianity has ever been mm. yeah, as a cover for white nationalism or misogyny or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't believe that. I mean, obviously, I don't believe that because I'm still a committed uh, evangelical Christian. Uh, But what I do believe is that I think there were a lot of things that I assumed were fringe um, that weren't fringe, uh, didn't turn out to be fringe, and also things that I thought were self-correcting over time. And so there would be a lot of times when I would say, okay, look, you, we've got a lot of craziness. I mean, especially in my, well, I don't say especially in my tradition, but I, I'm just thinking of in my tradition, uh, it would be a lot of craziness that's going on, but I would say, you know, uh, they're not making new versions of that. You know, you, you don't have, um, you don't have 22 year old Southern Baptists who are doing that, which was true. But what I didn't take into account is that a lot of those 22-year-olds would disengage, um, not, not necessarily leave the church, but they would, they would not be involved in the institutional sorts of turnarounds, and that a lot of the people who one thought would eventually kind of pass the baton didn't. <laughs> uh, so you, you add those things up. So yeah, I mean, I think it's. I used to take a group of um, students uh, from Southern Seminary uh, every year to the Southern Baptist Convention, and you'd always have a lot of them who'd never been to an SBC meeting before. And so I felt like I had to prep them. Look, there's going to be some crazy stuff that's going to happen at a microphone, yeah. but you know, every we're a family, and every family has wacky uncle so-and-so, and and that's, you know, you just have to kind of bear with that. Uh, And I think we, you know, eventually there was a point where I realized, oh, I'm I'm wacky uncle (laughs) (laughs) so-and-so. Okay, that's a a really good uh, caution, though, because I think, there was just a piece, I think, this week in The Atlantic arguing that the MAGA movement is going to burn itself out because young people and all the data shows that they don't buy into this. And there's sometimes this sense of, well, we got to put up with some of this ridiculousness now, but this younger generation will set it straight. But that's assuming the younger generation remains engaged and doesn't right. become so disillusioned that they just walk away and leave the crazy old uncles in charge. Especially when you're living in a time, and this is true both in the country and in a lot of uh, evangelical spaces, in which there really is not a... Uh, concern for passing the baton, to yeah. use the, the metaphor. There's really not that. There's instead a kind of frantic sense of one's own mortality at the possibility of doing that. And so you have an intensification of uh, hanging on. And uh, that's, you know, do, yeah, I think that um, the, is the MAGA movement going to burn itself out? Yes, but what's on the other end of that? Mm-hmm. Not 2015. Back to normal. That's not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last question. You've been doing a lot of publicity for this book, as I mentioned earlier, and the book's done really, really well. That's also provoked something of a reaction. I'm sure you've seen some of this. Uh, some people on social media are are more or less saying, well. Russell Moore, that's great, but you're kind of late to the party here. Some of us have been criticizing these things about evangelicalism for 
years and years and years. And there's a little bit of weirdness of been like, why is he getting all this attention right now for saying what some of us have been saying for a long, long time? Uh, respond to those voices that are well you you always are going to have that i mean it's the same sort of thing as saying you know uh well you republican who are taking on uh donald trump you know liz cheney uh why are why why should you uh do this when why didn't you see all of this immediately uh and the problem with that is to say, well, you can either <laughs> want uh, a sort of uh, republic where you have people who are kind of across a spectrum or just die. <laughs> you can have one of those. You can have one or the other. And I think that what is probably a, a, what I'm trying to do in terms of this project is not to walk away from. I actually believe the theology here, which is one of the reasons, with the primary reason why I'm so concerned about it, uh, because I I really am a biblical inerrantist, uh, exclusivity of Christ, uh, heaven and hell uh, sort of a person, and I don't uh, I don't have any interest in. Um, mainline Protestant liberalization or emerging church, whatever that we had in the last generation. Um, And those are the people that I'm speaking to. I'm speaking to the people who really do believe in Jesus. They have a very high view of the Bible. And a lot of them are coming to the point where they're saying, well, uh, I have to choose between Jesus, who's wrapped up with all of this stuff that all goes together, or nothing, sort of, uh, or or liberalizing out into Episcopalians, and I'm I'm wanting to say, no, you don't. You don't have to choose those two directions. Instead, there's a way to be faithful to Christ. 